Starting back training after your end of season break can be tough and a little bit demoralizing, but on the plus side, you will see significant improvements happen pretty quickly. Well, being able to measure those and check for any imbalances is important. So today we're going to be covering five different fitness and conditioning tests that you can do now at the start of your pre-season and then repeat again in a couple of months time to see how you're progressing. We're going to be covering the three commonly used fitness tests for the swim, bike and run, then some basic body measurements which you can perform yourself and finished up with a selection of body conditioning tests. Now I have to put it out there, the fitness tests are tough, they're designed to get the best out of you to give a true representation of where exactly you are with your fitness right now at this point in the season so you'll need to spread those out and come feeling fresh and in the right mindset. First up, the swim, and we're going to do the critical swim speed test, or CSS, which will give you your predicted pace you should be able to hold for 1500 meters right now. Now for this, you need a standard size swimming pool, hopefully with enough space so you're not gonna get interrupted, and a stopwatch. And before you start, you need to do a thorough warm up, making sure you include some pace efforts so you're ready to go. And then it's gonna be a 400 meters all out best effort with a complete recovery afterwards. So making sure you include a little bit of swimming to loosen off before repeating it over a 200 meters all out. And then you're gonna take those times and input them into an online CSS calculator, which will give you your predicted 1500 meter threshold pace, so to speak. It'll basically tell you the pace that you should be able to hold per 100 meters if you were to swim a 1500. And this is then also really useful, not only as a fitness marker right now, but you can use it in your training as you start your pre-season. This is the one you're probably most familiar with. It is the dreaded FTP test or the functional threshold power test. And it's quite similar to the swim. If you are glutton for punishment though, you could do a full one hour all out of the sustained effort, but the slightly more pleasant option is the 20 minute test. Now for this, you're going to need a watt bike or your bike on a turbo trainer, and you need to be able to measure your heart rate and your average power. Again, this is going to require a thorough warm up and plenty of motivation because it is 20 minutes all out, but at a sustained effort level. So you need to make sure you can maintain pretty average watts throughout, and then you're gonna take that average power and either submit it into an online calculator or simply times it by 0.95 to give you your functional threshold power, which is basically in theory what you could hold if you rode all out for an hour. And this is really useful as a benchmark for your fitness now that you can easily test again in a couple of months time, but it's also a great way to actually set your training plans right now. You're probably getting used to the theme by now. Yes, this is another sustained effort that is going to hurt. You've got a couple of options though. So there's the 5K run, whether you've got a local 5K park run that's fairly flat, or a 5K loop that you know that you can repeat time and time again. Or the other option is the 30 minute test. Whichever one you choose, you're still gonna need a thorough warm up and be able to be ready to run hard from the very start. If you're going for the 5K option, then you obviously need to record your time and ideally your heart rate as well. If however you're doing the 30 minute test, then you'll need to record the distance. So for that, you're gonna need a GPS watch or run it on a track so you know exactly how far you've gone. And then from that, you can actually work out your running speed at lactic threshold. So you'll need to divide the distance in meters that you've run by the time you've been running for. So that would be 1,800 seconds and that can give you your RS LT. But you don't need to worry about that calculation. Simply having the distance that you've run and your heart rate gives you a marker that you can compare to later down in the season. You'll be pleased to hear that these don't involve any pain or even any physical exertion. It is, as it sounds on the tin, some simple measurements that will give you a baseline marker now that you can compare back to later on in the season. And a great one to get started with, the obvious one, is your weight. So pull out the scales, stand on them and record your weight, but don't get bogged down by that number because we all know that muscle does weigh more than fat and during your off season you might well have lost a little bit of muscle but put on some fat and you could end up even weighing the same. So now is a great time if you do have the opportunity to get hold of some skin fold calipers and get someone to measure your actual body fat percentage for a more accurate measurement. 
a couple of other options, grab a tape measure and take the circumference of your waist, your hips and your thighs. Just make sure you always measure in the widest part so you can replicate it later on in the season. And it isn't scientific, but I can normally tell whether I've put on weight or not by how tight my jeans are, although obviously they can stretch as the season goes on as well. So don't necessarily rely on that one. And then finally, if you are feeling really brave, you could maybe just get a photo of yourself in your sports kit or in your underwear, and then you can see how your physique has changed. There are so many other tests and measurements that you can do to give you an idea of where your body is at various points in the season. For this, I've picked out some more simple and objective tests that will give you a guideline for your core strength, where your flexibility is, and also flag up any potential muscle imbalances. This first one does involve some effort, I'm afraid. It is the dreaded plank. It is pretty simple and straightforward. You need to get into the plank position on your elbows with a straight line going from your heels through your hips to your shoulders. And if you do have a friend or you've got a mirror nearby, you can use that to check that you've got good form. And then you need to hold that for as long as you can. So time it, and as soon as your form starts to drop, that's when the clock needs to end. Then you need to repeat this on either side. So get into your side plank position with one elbow down, one foot on top of the other, or one in front of the other. Just make sure you repeat the exact same position on the other side, time them both, and compare. Sticking with strength, but now looking more specifically at power, it's the standing jump. Again, you're going to need to make sure you're thoroughly warmed up for this one. You need a tape measure laid out along the ground, and you're going to start at zero, and you're going to jump with both feet together, landing with both feet together as far as you can. Make sure you repeat it three times, and you're going to take your best score from this. It might be useful to have someone to help mark out and note exactly where you do land. And now a progression from this, or a variation as well, a great way to see if you've got any imbalances here is the single leg, or otherwise known as the hop. So you're gonna repeat the same, first on one leg for three hops, and then onto the other leg for three hops. Now it's not unusual to have a discrepancy, partly because you'll probably find it easier and more comfortable taking off and landing on one foot than the other. But when you come back to measure it later on in the season, you've got a good benchmark, and as long as you're not having any niggles or any injuries, there's nothing to worry about. The final couple of tests involve less effort, you'll be pleased to hear. It's time to look at your flexibility. But before we go any further, it's worth pointing out that it is hard to measure accurately, partly because you can compensate and cheat slightly. So just make sure that you do a stretch that you can replicate exactly when you do it again to measure back. And always make sure you're thoroughly warmed up before testing your flexibility. The hamstring stretch is a common one. You can do this either sitting or standing, and you should feel the stretch down the back of your hamstrings. Now to measure this, you just want to see how close your hands or fingertips can get to your heels or down your shins, or in some cases, how far past. But just make sure you don't bounce on this exercise, please. And remember, it isn't purely going to be your hamstrings because your lower back and your hips will be involved in this test as well. But if you want a really accurate measure of how tight your hamstrings are purely on their own, then see if you can get a physiotherapist to measure it in a passive movement and give you a number that way. The knee to wall test is a great way to measure the flexibility or tightness of your ankles. And more specifically, it's actually measuring the length of your soleus muscle at the back of your lower calf. So you need to stand facing the wall with your toes just away from it and then bend your knee until it touches the wall. Move your foot back until your knee is only just touching the wall or just able to, and then measure that distance from the tips of your toe to the wall and then repeat that on the other side and compare. And if you do want to make this even more specific, you can actually test the toe, big toe flexor by putting a little wedge under your big toe and then repeating the test and make sure you measure on the left and on the right. If you do have the opportunity to go and see a physiotherapist at the beginning of the season, it's a great idea to get an overall body MOT. So you've got a baseline marker that if you do get niggles later on in the season, you know what's normal and where it was tight anyway. And if you don't have a physiotherapist to hand, even a personal trainer can help you get these more accurate measurements so you've got something to compare to as you go on. All of us are different, so these tests aren't so you can compare yourself to your friends, but more importantly, so you've got a good starting point that you can refer back to and you know what is your normal. It also helps flag up any weaknesses or imbalances that you can address now or early on in the season before they end up materialising as injuries later on. And doing these tests regularly will just give you a good idea of how you're progressing throughout the season. Well, hit the thumb up button if you've liked this video. Hit the globe to subscribe to make sure you get all of our videos here at GTN. And if you are wanting to know a little bit more about CSS or critical swim speed, Mark's actually made a video in Triathlon Training Explained going into detail on this, and you can find that just here. And if you want to know how to activate those glutes early on in the season, I made a video on that just here.